Welcome back guys to Miles Edgeworth Ace Attorney Investigations where last episode after Dick Gumshoe got carted away by his fellow officers to work under Agent Lang as we jam out to this track we started to investigate the Wild Wild West area with Kay, the only area we could look through with all the officers blocking our way. There we met Officer Meekins undercover in blue badger costume before following some footprints into the garage he was standing in front of, finding the dead body of Oliver Deacon, or is that Colin Devray, within a parking space. Now of Agent Lang having caught the scent as well, we deal with his intrusion. My man brought me up to speed over the radio. And I have to say, you really should have called. I heard you found something very intriguing. I have nothing to hide, Agent Lang. It's exactly what you see before you. I'll take it from here. Yeah, that guy's really dead. Hey, you waiting for an invitation? Hurry up and detain the suspect now. Suspect? Who? Officer Meekins, is it? You come with us. What, sir? I have nothing to do with it, sir. Agent Lang, don't you think you're being a bit rash? Do you even have a good reason to suspect Officer Meekins? Huh, I'll leave that kind of stuff to you prosecutors. It's your job, after all. Like I said earlier, the crime scene isn't as forgiving as your precious courtroom. That's your answer? I know you like your logic and reasoning. But that sort of impractical fluff is not needed out here in the field. All you have to do is arrest a suspicious person, that's the suspicious person. That's how you eliminate crime from the streets. But that's also precisely how you unnecessarily arrest innocent people by mistake. Innocent people? Nonsense. There's no such thing as an innocent person. We've all got a blemish or two in our hearts. That's tyranny. I won't allow such a thing to go on unchecked before my eyes. <laughs> Too bad you don't call the shots around here. As I have sworn to uphold the laws of this land, I cannot allow you to take this man in. That you would arrest a man on false charges without even conducting an investigation. Have you no honor as a member of law enforcement? You. How dare you speak so disrespectfully to our Sifu! Hold it! <laughs> you amuse me, Mr. Prosecutor. Lang Zee says, every pack has its own rules. If you can play by their rules and come out on top, that is a true victory. Alright, I'll give you your beloved laws a fair shake. I'll show you just how much investigating I've done. Through my line of logic. It's argument time. Shilong Lang's logic. I see a lot of bodies like the one being carted off in my time. I can say it was shot in a single glance, but even you figured that much out, right? With your current gun laws, it's not exactly easy to get your hands on a gun. Well, unless you're a member of law enforcement like Officer Meekins, isn't that right? That is your reasoning. Solid as a rock. It's based on the philosophy of detainment. Um, what's this philosophy of detainment? Ah, you don't know. In that case, pay attention, girly. In my country, the criminals have a saying. Beware of the wolf. Why the wolf? Because in my language, Lang means wolf. And you don't mess with me or my pack. And as for the detainment philosophy, its father is my honourable ancestor, Lang Zi. Hmm. I think I'd have heard of him and his teachings if he is that famous. Lang Zi developed it as he was worked to lock criminals away thousands of years ago. To this day, the Zeng Far Police still train its recruits using his philosophies. But thousands of years ago? That makes your story about as believable as a fairy tale. <laughs> Anything wears down and breaks over time. Do you really believe something as ancient as that can be applied to today's world? Ah, you mean like certain laws and all that stuff going around? No, no it doesn't. Things need to be written all the blooming time. But people want to keep things as they are. Stupid, stupid people. <laughs> Copyright laws were invented at a point in time where lots of the media today didn't exist, for example. That's just that alone. That's the tip of the iceberg. Don't know why I went off on that, but still. You want to put it to a test? Shilong Lang's logic. I've seen a lot of bodies like the one being cut off in my time, have you? Hold it! So what can you tell me about the body? 
a lot, even without an autopsy, I have my ways. They teach you the basics of forensics along with the detention philosophy. Oh, then you wouldn't mind telling me a little of what you figured out, correct? That was a good press. Like, say he was a shot in a single glass, but even you figured that much out, right? Yes. Yes, I think anyone who saw the bullet wounds would come to the same conclusion. Not so fast! So Sounds like that, did he? Hey, don't pat yourself on the back yet! What's that supposed to mean? You got a scroll for that, have you? Langzi says, search where the water is deepest. You have to keep your eyes on the big fish that lurks in the depths, which is the killer. Is that right? And what would you know about the killer? Your current gun laws is not exactly easy to get your hands on again. Hold it. But it appear you've studied a little of our laws. Studied? Who needs to study what every child on any street corner already knows? It's that... that... She da! The Federal Firearms Restriction Act. Well, that's it. The Federal Firearms Restriction Act. I hear it's not easy to get a gun these days. Interesting. That woman is the one in charge of keeping track of the information. Not unless you're a member of law enforcement like Officer Meekins, isn't that right? Hold it. If that's the case, there are plenty of other officers who might be potential suspects. You're not seriously going to arrest each and every one of them, are you? As if I wouldn't need to. I've already looked into everyone else here. Oh. Other than Officer Meekins, I know no one else's weapon has been fired. How do you check every single person's weapon in such a short span of time? That's because each and every one of my subordinates is extremely capable. It didn't take more than a few minutes to conduct the entire investigation. The power of sheer numbers. But you have yet to check Officer Meekin's weapon, correct? Thanks for reminding me. Hey, you. Show me your gun. Oh! You've lost it, haven't you? What's wrong? Why does he look so sickly pale all of a sudden? Gun! What did you say? I can't hear you. Stop mumbling and spit it out already. Sir! Sir! I lost my gun, sir! How could you be so irresponsible? <laughs> In the end, it looks like you're still the only suspect we've got. You're the one who waited here outside this garage to ambush and kill the victim. Do you think that Officer Meekins waited here to kill the victim, do you, Lang? I think this little accusation deserves a lot more scrutiny. Officer Meekins ambushed the victim in this garage and killed him here with this gun. Press, press, press. You mean to tell me that the murder occurred here in this garage? The fact that the suspect was found almost next to where the body was found, I'd say it's pretty obvious that this is the crime scene. No, 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 no. We know that. No, no, no. Blood, blood. No pulley blood. Langzi says, a criminal always returns to the scene of the crime. Hey, finally a quote even I've heard of before. Furthermore, Langzi says... Successful investigations are the result of multiple returns to a crime scene. Looks like neither detectives nor criminals have changed their ways over the millenniums. So this is the kind of conclusion the philosophy of detainment can lead you to. I don't get it, Mr. Edgeworth. Why are you putting yourself on the line for Mr. Meekins? Not that I particularly care about what happens to Miss Officer Meekins. What? However, I can't simply stand by while Agent Lang ignores our country's laws. Shilong Lang. So what sort of investigator are you? Right, so we're obviously... Presenting to quite here. So, let's do that. And it's not the obvious crime scene. No, no, no! Wrong statement! No, right statement. Okay, that... I'm just looking for, like, the, the line where he said it was obviously the crime scene. But, uh, it's not that one. It's the one where we got that line via pressing it, I guess. So it is this one. And we're going to present this as saying... Like, it's not the crime scene. I'm pretty sure. Objection! Good. He's doing his finger waggle. 
Unfortunately for you, Agent Lang, that is simply not possible. What do you mean? You've seen the crime scene for yourself. And while you were looking, did you not think to yourself that it was a little too clean? It's interesting how I can understand where we're going with this, but I still don't know how to apply. Still, after this many Phoenix Wright games. Or Miles Edward. Ah! So you did not notice that there was too little blood. Do you still wish to claim that Officer Meekins committed the murder here? Because this isn't the crime scene, and if it was your men who led you to think it was, then I suggest you leave this case to local police to set the record straight. Ah! <laughs> Not bad! I see your logic can be just as sound as mine. In that case, let me ask you this. Don't you think it's weird that Officer was hanging out around here in the first place? Weird? How so? Are you? The squad's not even supposed to be in this area, right? What are you doing neglecting your duties and loafing around here? I- I- Don't you dare give me some lame excuse like I found myself taking a walk. But sir, I really did take a walk, sir! You're a disgrace. How dare you take your pack obligations so lightly? Officer Meekings is looking extra meek. Is he hiding something? Mr. Edgeworth, please, sir! Save me the way you did earlier, please, sir! Officer Meekings, please give us a detailed account of what happened. Sir, not you too! Meekins' testimony. It's true, sir! I wasn't assigned to this area, sir! I was told to check every square inch of the main gate area, sir! I also went looking for the kidnappers while selling dreams in the blue badger mobile, sir! But, I got completely caught up in my role selling dreams to the children, sir! Before I knew it, I found myself here in this area, sir! What is this blue badger mobile? It's a moving store on wheels to sell sweet dreams and merchandise, sir! So the blue badger mobile is just a roaming souvenir shop. A roaming souvenir shop? I don't think it has much space for stock. Sir, I swear I was chasing the kidnappers down while I was being a good dream merchant! He seems rather worked up, even more than his usual hyperactive self. He sure seems sure of what he's saying. Can you try to calm down and lower your voice to a more reasonable level, officer? Sir! Roger, sir! Alright, Mika's testimony. We just got a new thing. It's true, sir! I wasn't assigned to this area, sir! Hold it! Right then, where were you assigned to? I, I was assigned to the main gate, sir! You must be in the area with the bridge and the outrageous fountain. Okay, then why are you here in the Wild Wild West area? That's because... it's because of a very deep reason, ma'am! The main gate area is where we saw the proto-badger? I'll sort of check every square inch of the main gate area, sir! Hold it. Describe for me how you conducted your investigation. Yes, sir. Well, first I made sure there were no suspicious looking people in the area, sir. But the only people that seemed to gather around me were little girls, sir. Well, what did you expect when you dressed like the Blue Badger? I thought I had no choice at that point, sir, so... I also went looking for the kidnappers while selling dreams of the Blue Badger mobile, sir. This could be it, because it's linked to what we just got. What was that did you mean by selling dreams? Let me have a look in the organizer a second before we continue that line of thing. What does this actually say? My boy shot on three wheels was parked inside the Wild Wild West area garage. So it was parked in there. Like, next to the body. You couldn't not notice the body, could you? <laughs> Tis a thing. So it would have to be afterwards, but still. Sir! The Blue Badger Mobile is where dreams are collected! Um, what? Sweetness like you've never known except in dreams, ma'am. Like innocent drops. And bitterness found only in nightmares, ma'am. Like guilty jawbreakers. Selling those that I pushed the Blue Badger Mobile along is my sworn duty, ma'am. Pushed it. But I got completely caught up in my role selling dreams to the children, sir! <laughs> I'm gonna just press this anyway. You can believe you forgot to look for the kidnappers. No, sir! Of course not, sir! I would never do something like that, sir! Um, you're absolutely right! Wow, you're good at this forcing people to confess thing, Mr. Edgeworth. To be frank, I'm just a little man, sir. I'm better at selling kids a few smaller dreams than looking for a big crook, sir. Enough wallowing in your own self-pity. Let's return to your testimony. Yes, sir! 
one you want. I found myself here in this area, sir! Hold it! How did you wind up all the way over here? I was in the middle of a sea of kids, sir! But one of the kids decided to challenge me to a fight, sir! I had to run away from the child's painful drop kicks, and before I knew it... <laughs> the good old drop kick! I just had my fair share of those when I was a kid. It was always the best when you felt one really connect with your opponent. In any case, she wound up here for a reason completely unrelated to the investigation. Sir! That's right, sir! That's not something you should be admitting to with your head held high, officer. It sounds like he simply forgot about his real job and became the Blue Badger. However, there was one flaw in Officer Mika's story. But I have the feeling that he'll need some prodding before he'll spill the beans. Literally just because, like, he never went out on the Blue Badger mobile because it was always parked? I mean, it either had never been moved because there was a body in there. Or the blue badger mobile was used to move the body there, but we don't know if there's blood inside it. Or he was, he, you know, the, the killing happened after he parked it again. But it's all so dumb, right? We don't know which one of those situations it could possibly be. He could have got out and obliviously just stepped over the corpse. Because people can do that, right? Alright, let's present this. How did you even have the key? I guess you just push. But still. But it was parked. So something's not right here with this. So we're going to present the Blue Badger Mobile to the statement that talks about the Blue Badger Mobile and hope that it elucidates, illuminates. Objection! Works for me. Good. Officer Meekings, I would appreciate it if you didn't tell such transparent lies. <laughs> sir, I'm lying, sir. Yes, you are. If you were really out there selling dreams to the Blue Badger Mobile until recently, then what is it doing here inside the garage? Ah! Actually, I just lost track, sir! Lost track of what? By the time I realized it, the blue badge was nowhere to be found, sir! Which would mean it was perhaps stolen. Well, that's when I came back to this area, thinking maybe it was in the garage, sir. But that's when you found me, Mr. Edgeworth, sir! A likely story. Who do you think is going to buy such a convenient tell as that? And what exactly is so convenient about his story? Car getting stolen. It's completely unbelievable, even for a cover story. Well, I think we could assume the car was used alright. To move the dead body. What what? You killed the victim at some distant location, Officer Meekins. And then you used the blue badge mobile to transport it all the way here. Now then, you come with me. But it wasn't me! Sir, the killer, sir! It wasn't me, sir! Agent Lang, wait. What do you want now? We still don't know where the real scene of the crime is. Can you please say what we all want to say? Meekins is literally too inept to murder someone. That's what everyone wants to say. We can't say we know all the facts of the case, let alone the truth. I told you, truth schmoof, I can care less. Our job is to catch the crook. You'll find out your precious truth after we arrest this guy and take him in. That's the job of you prosecutors in your fancy course with your logic. As for us, we don't have that kind of time to waste. You boorish buffoon. Oh, you need to leave. What? We need to get the body to autopsy and you guys are getting in the way. You, you would interfere with another one of my investigations. Hey now, let's not forget who holds the actual authority to conduct investigations here. Ah. I'm afraid the one doing the interrupting is you, my ignorant little pretty boy. Ah. Ah! Now be a good fancy boy and get out of my sight. If you don't, I'll arrest you for obstruction of justice. Well, seems he has all the power, so he can do whatever he all he wants. But now with our little jingle, to save and continue, we move on. It's Skatewater Land, the reminder that sometimes things work, but most of the times they don't. Hmm, she sounded like a pair of peasants. Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, okay. There's something even thieves should never steal. Do you know what that is? You really shouldn't steal anything. However, I'll bite. What shouldn't a thief steal? Life? A life. It's too heavy of a burden on your soul to get away with. Ever. That's something we can agree on. Well said, Kay. No matter what we may try, murder is the one crime that can never truly be hidden. 
And I intend to prove that by my own hands. When I apprehend the murderer myself. Alright, and I'm gonna work extra hard to be a good assistant. Let's go! I still never said she could be my assistant. I'm just gonna drop the issue. The first thing we should do is locate the real scene of the murder. Miss Edgeworth! Detective Gumshoe! Mr. Edgeworth, stadium! Hurry, sir! This is supposed to be hush hush, but they found a witness at the stadium! A witness? You, what do we tell you about leaving your assigned post? Ah, the jig is up! Mr. Edgeworth, remember that I'm always rooting for you, so go get him, sir! Those detectives sure look like they're enjoying themselves. It's not all fun and games, okay? Now then, let's head to the stadium and meet this witness. Who's the witness this time? March 13th at 1.42 p.m. in the stadium. I thought there was a witness here. Yeah, I don't see anyone. Mr. Edgeworth! Who is it? Long time no see. Hey, Emma. You are Miss Emma Skye, correct? This girl is the younger sister of my former superior, Lana Sky. Two years ago, we stood in the same courtroom together as witness and prosecutor. And I thought she had gone to Europe to study forensics. I can't believe you remember me, Mr. Edgeworth. Of course I do. How have you been? You look to be in good spirits. Are you still studying abroad? You bet. More than anything, I want to investigate crime scenes, scientifically. I've been studying non-stop every day to become a top-notch forensic scientist. But it's spring break now, so I thought I'd come back for a bit. I see. Okay, you're gonna be replaced. I almost didn't recognize you. You've really grown in these past few years. Please don't tease me, Mr. Edgeworth. I know I still have a long way to go. But I'm gonna be a super forensic scientist someday. You'll see. You seem to know Mr. Edgeworth really well. You two acquaintances. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Emma Sky. Nice to meet you. I'm suddenly abroad now to be a forensic scientist. How about you? Well, that's a great dream. My name's Kay Faraday, and I'm training to become an unstoppable great thief. A, a great thief? Don't think too hard on it, Emma. It's not worth the trouble. In any case, we have much to catch up on. You bet we do. All right, let's talk to Emma. So, why are you here, Emma, before she got addicted to snackies? <laughs> Snackaroos? I can't remember what they were called now. Oh, no! So, why are you here, Emma? Well, I just happened to decide to come back home for spring break. And then I heard that you'd come back too, so I raced on over here. I really wanted to welcome you back at the airport, but I just missed you. How exactly did you know I was here? Through the power of science, naturally. Never underestimate what science can do for you. I use these to track your footprints and I follow them straight to you. This set is the greatest. It's so wonderfully scientific. You spray this chemical on the ground and when you shine a special light on it, Sing! The footprints light up like an electrified noble gas in a glass tube. It's always like magic, scientifically speaking. Forensic science has never seemed more ominous to me than at this very moment for stalking. That's an interesting thing going on with her glasses there. The reflection. Interesting pose. Emma, I'd like to ask you about what you witnessed. Huh, what are you talking about? Are you not the witness Detective Gumshoe told us about? Well, did you get a call from Detective Gumshoe earlier? He was practically yelling at me. Mr. Edgeworth needs your scientific doing He's right now, pal, he said. What was that man thinking? Or rather, not thinking. Let me guess, there's been a murder, right? Yes, uh, unfortunately. There's a sudden glint in her eyes. But I need to keep my mind focused on the witness. Now, where did that person go? So it's not you. Well, let's examine the other thing here. I assume this is another badger mobile. Yeah, but it's a different colour than the blue badger's car. Yes, this is the retina searing pink model. Hmm, what's that off in the distance? The pink badger! There's only one in the park, remember? Oh, hey, it's the pink badger! Badger, get! 
Badger, 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 badger. Just what does she see in these silly things? A mushroom! Tough love. I think this badger is something to say to you, Mr. Edgeworth. Are you by chance the witness I've been searching for? Sorry, but I don't speak badger dance. <laughs> Who else speaks badger dance here? Can we just take the demo? Can you translate? Ah! I can't take me inside that stuffy head anymore! Hey, you're, you're! No! Why her? Why here? Why now? I first met this woman three years ago. She was a witness in one of my cases. She has since gone out of her way to pop up unexpectedly and cause me great grief. Edgy Poo! Why couldn't you understand what I was trying to tell you? I mean, really. I was trying so hard to keep the kids' dreams alive by staying in character. But you couldn't pick up on what I was trying to convey to you. I'm sick and tired of that red red way of talking, so I'm going to just be direct. I had a bad feeling before, but this just made it official. Today has gone beyond the typical not my day into the realm of waking nightmare. So you're a friend of Mr. Edgeworth too, Miss Pink Badger. You could say that, but right now I'm just the Pink Badger, dearly. She may look the part, but I know better than to trust my eyes around this woman. My name is Wendy Oldbag, but you can call me Wendy or Granny or whatever suits your fancy. Nice to meet you, Miss Oldbag. I'm Kay Faraday. Oof, what do I care about a young whippersnapper like you? Yeesh, I was just trying to be polite. She's back. We have Meekins. We have Emma. We have... Wendy Oldbag. <laughs> oh god. Protect your rear, Edgeworth. Weren't you a security guard at one of the Gatewater hotels the last time we met? <laughs> I go where I'm needed. I'm very good at what I do, unlike the youth of today. I get called in all the time to fill you when there aren't enough hands. But enough about me, Edgy Poo. I'm finally dejected right now. I finally get a chance to see you again, and here you are talking with two young girls. Men are all the same. It doesn't matter how old they get. Ah, we're young girls. Why just the other day I have my young to know it's me? He went and got into an arranged marriage with a 16 year old. Why is he not at all the same? The Pokemon, what? You seem to attract all sorts of interesting people, Mr. Edgeworth. Why am I interested about the arranged marriage with a 16 year old? What the hell's going on there? This seems wrong. Okay. Please, I'm begging you. By all means, do not provoke her any further. Sounds like we just found a crime. Though, of course, it depends what country you're in. And even then, the laws are spotty. And weird in some places. My goodness. Aren't you forgetting about something, Mr. Edgeworth? This person could be the witness. Honestly, I hope she isn't. But I don't think fate is going to be so kind today. I saw what happened. Yeah, I even saw the exact moment when it happened. How's that? So it's true. She is the witness. <sighs> I don't suppose I can afford to ignore the old bag. Yes, it was just a little while ago. I saw what happened right in front of me. The moment of the murder! You mean to say that you witnessed someone being killed right before your eyes? Sounds like a pretty important piece of testimony to me. That's not testimony. That's more than testimony. What did you witness, old bag? I came to the stadium to take a short break. As I was resting, I happened to glance over and I saw two men facing each other in that area. Suddenly there was a loud gunshot and the person who was shot fell to the ground. It was a very terrifying experience, let me tell you. Now, height. What, what's going on here? Remember the angle of the gunshot entry and exit? This is the thing we're going to have to probably figure out. Looks like we hit the jackpot, huh, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, I can't afford to ignore what she has to say. Unfortunately. What's that unfortunately attacked on the end supposed to mean, Edgy Poo? Well, anyway, let's see what we can find out from this little old lady. What did old bag witness? Our rebuttal. I don't think there's anything bad there, but we'll find out by pressing. I came to the stadium to take a short break. Hold it! You mean you took a break from being the pink badger? You may not think it, but it's hard work keeping kids' dreams alive. You smell a sweat, your hip creaks with pain, you even begin to dream about work. That's the kind of story that would scar a child for life, you know. Well, that's why I chose to come and take my break here, whippersnapper. 
I don't plan on playing the part of the dead badger in front of a bunch of kids. So what did you see while you and the pink badger were resting? Oh yes that, well... As I was resting I happened to glance over and I saw two men facing each other in that area. You saw two men, can you describe them for me? They look like your average Joes, completely uninteresting and not worth fawning over. I'm telling you, it was so boring that I don't even remember much beyond that. But did they have any special features? Anything you can recall would be very helpful. Oh my! Don't tell me you're jealous of those two men. Hey, she's right. You do seem pretty worked up over them, Mr. Edgeworth. I I'm not worked up over anyone, and I'm not jealous. It's alright, Eddie Pooh. Those two were just foals compared with Stallion like you. I thought so little of them that I lost interest the instant I laid eyes on them. Suddenly, there was a loud gunshot, and the person who was shot fell to the ground. Hold it! You're claiming to have seen the exact moment in which the murder took place. Absolutely! That gun made a terrible racket when it was fired. You didn't try to go help the person that got shot. I'm only one person, you smart alecky brat. What could I have done? Well, I took off as soon as I could to find someone who could help. Two men, one bullet. It's all consistent with what we found out from the body. Sadly, there wasn't exactly a lot of new information to go on in your testimony. But if I saw the guy again, I'm sure I could identify him for you. I mean, how do you expect me to remember anything without something to jog my memory? Self-centered, aren't we? While it was somewhat useful, her testimony also presents us with a new problem. Mr. Edgeworth? Yes? It's about this new problem. What is that giant grin on your face for? Do you want me to show you something really nice? No, thank you. Don't be so mean! I swear it's something you're gonna like. What is that gadget you're holding? What you see before you is the secret weapon of a great thief. Ooh, a secret weapon of a great thief. Let's not find out what it is until next episode, because cliffhangers are always the ways to go here on Miles Edgeworth, Ace Attorney Investigations, where we've managed to cut the conversation with Miss Oldbag to the smallest amount we could, which is a win, I guess. But we know we're going to probably have to talk to her again once we might have uh, identified or at least have some photos of people that might have been around the place so we can find out who did the shooting. With that said, we'll see you next time as we find out what the secret weapon is. Bye-bye.